Greetings guys, girls, non-binary pals, and welcome back to another video. Recently, I was spending some time on Twitter, as I do every single day, and I came across this one TikTok uh, that my friend Tara, Tara Mooney, had quote retweeted, and it sent me down a bit of a spiral. All right, thanks for paying your rent this month. Go ahead and sign here. It's just gonna ask you a couple of questions. A tip? I'm not tipping my landlord. And so I really needed to talk about it. And so what we're gonna do today is talk about it. But before we get into it, I would like to take a moment to thank today's patron of the day, Elias. I appreciate you hugely. Thank you so much for all of your support. And I hope that you enjoy this video. If you would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash savvycat or click the top link in the description. If you wanna hear more about it, then stick around until the end. All right. So yeah, I can't really put into words this TikTok because it's kind of unbelievable, honestly. And so I'm gonna play it for you and then you'll see what we're about to get ourselves into. All right, thanks for paying your rent this month. Go ahead and sign here. It's just gonna ask you a couple of questions. A tip? I'm not tipping my landlord. So you'll tip a barista who pours overpriced coffee into a cup, but not the guy who's on call 24 seven to make sure you have a safe home. I'm not tipping you. This isn't a restaurant. Okay, so you'll tip an extra 25% for somebody to carry you a basket of chicken wings, but you won't tip someone who responds for after hours emergency calls. I, uh... Yep. Well, I guess when it's time for your lease renewal, I'm gonna make sure gratuity is included in your rent. It's a little tip I learned from two guys take on real estate. So obviously this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. What the fuck? <laughs> why would I tip my landlord? Why, am, why would I tip my landlord? The person who decided to like buy a house they don't intend on living in just so they can make money on the less fortunate who can't afford to buy houses they do intend to live in. You clearly have enough money. Since you're buying a ton of houses, you don't need the extra. I can't afford to give you extra. Also, I don't know if you're aware of this, but like 10% of my rent is much more than 10% the price of a coffee. Like one's like, one or two pounds. One's like, like a hundred, two hundred plus pounds. You know, there's a bit, <laughs> there's a big difference. Um, and I feel like tipping you like two pounds, you're not going to appreciate because it doesn't really make a difference, right? And I also don't want to do that because I'd like to be able to live in a house. And being like your landlord, I'm on call for you twenty four seven. I do everything for you. I'm here at an instant. Bullshit. So many landlords are so shit. At the last place that I lived in, we didn't have heating for the entire time we were there. We were there for 16 months. We never had heating. Before we moved in, they were like, oh, by the way, there's no heating right now. Uh, it's being sent in from somewhere and it'll be installed within the next couple of weeks. Is that fine? And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. We can deal for a couple of weeks. Uh, they're like, okay, we'll take like, you know, 50 pounds off your rent this month just to cover some electricity because we've provided some space heaters. And we were like, okay, that's fine. And then they never installed it, ever. Every time we emailed to ask for an update, they were like, oh, sorry, it's, it's stuck, it's waiting. And I don't like being annoying. This is my biggest fault. Kat also doesn't like being annoying. So like, if shit was broken, if the heating is not working, I don't wanna complain. I don't want to be an inconvenience and I also don't want someone coming into my house, you know, like this is my space. I don't want someone in there. Uh, so we just kind of dealt with it and we just froze all winter. And by the time we moved out, we still didn't have heating. And actually when it came to renewing the lease at the end of our first year and we were just renewing for four months, they tried to put the price of rent up by 25%. And we were like, we literally don't have heating. I'm not giving you extra money. So no, fuck you. <laughs> Why would I tip my landlords? They, they don't do shit. They don't do shit. The landlord here has been like significantly better. Like every time I have called my landlord for help, I have received it relatively quickly. I still have to pay him to live here. So I don't really want to give him extra because I, I don't think I should have to do that. Uh, and the, the barista, it's not their fault that the coffee is overpriced. It's not their fault the coffee's overpriced. They also have to go home and pay their shitty landlord. Yeah? 
So I'm giving them money so that they can afford to pay their rent because they aren't earning money by like preying on people who can't afford to buy houses. You are, so fuck you. So this is how I was introduced to these people. And you'll notice they have a recurring character, which is this person in green, the long green wig. That's their like leftist character. They're, they're a liberal uh, housing is a human rights character. And um, they have some things to say about that. I, I knew they were bad people, obviously from this, but like, I genuinely am quite like horrified <laughs> by some of the content that they make. So be prepared for it because it's an actual nightmare. This is your warning. I am so excited to see my new apartment. Well, I'm really excited to be your new landlord. All right, so here's your new place. Did you clean this? <laughs> oh my God, a squatter! <gasps> ah! Nope. I'm not a squatter. I mail myself postcard here. Wait, so I can't just throw you out? I have to go through a six month long eviction process instead? Yep, six months free rent. Well, I guess that's better than the lawsuit I'd get from illegally throwing you out. It's a good thing I knew about this by following two guys take on real estate. I like this one purely because I have just learned that in some states such as California, if you have something like a bill mailed to an address and it has your name on it, they have to let you live there for free. <laughs> they can't kick you out. And I love that. Thank you for telling me that. I'm now telling all of you that. Uh, so I appreciate that information. However, I really, really, really strongly hate all of the comments because my good Lord, uh, I didn't expect them to be nice comments, right? Obviously, they're not good people. They obviously don't want people living rent free in their empty houses. Uh, that's obviously not what they wanna do. So they have some things to say. Like here are some comments that they have liked. I screenshot these comments because they have liked them. Squatters can't tell the police what happened if they have brain damage. Yeah, I'm sorry. If I came home and found someone there, they would get shot. Drag them out by their feet. It's such bullshit that squatters have any rights to property or dwellings they didn't buy or acquire through the proper process. Next time, get a huge bag of fleas and throw it in. And they replied, let's be real, she already has fleas. Okay, how about murder? Fixes all your issues. And they have liked all of those comments, which is horrifying and so disgusting. Bro, if I like cannot fathom like, if people are squatting in your empty flat, it is because they literally have nowhere else to go, right? Like, if people can afford housing, they're going to live in housing. They're only there because they can't afford anywhere else. And it was fucking empty. And if you don't want people who don't own the property or aren't renting the property to be in the property, maybe don't buy a bunch of property that you don't intend on living in and keeping it empty for so long. Because if you didn't own, a ton of empty property, none of your property could have squatters in it because you wouldn't own any empty property. So there's my solution to you. Don't own property that you don't need because <laughs> you don't need it. And other people clearly do. My God. Yeah. So my counter to like fucking murder is like, let people live, have empathy. Maybe is a solution. Um, not even like empathy. I understand that not everyone feels empathy, but like the understanding that, you know, people deserve to like exist, you know? And you're taking that away from people. Hey, you can't evict me. Housing's a human right. You can afford a brand new luxury car, but you won't pay your rent. He doesn't know what I know. He's not paying for rent, I'm not paying for heat. Hey! No rent, no water for you. Not that he showers anyway. Hey! Hey landlord, you can't turn off my services. That's a constructive eviction. I'm suing! Hey, what? You're telling me I have to provide all my services even though you're not a paying customer? 
How did someone like you outsmart someone like me? That's because you don't follow two guys take on real estate. I love this dude at the end when he's doing the you don't follow thing because they're called two guys take on real estate. And instead of saying like, you don't follow two guys take on real estate on TikTok, he's always like, he's like, you guys don't follow two guys take on real estate. Two guys take on real estate. It sounds like they're called two guys take and the app is real estate. And that's hilarious to me. And he makes that mistake literally every single time. And it's never not funny. It's so funny to me. Uh, anyway, this one confused me so much when I watched it. I had to watch it like a couple times because like they're obviously on the landlord's side, but the way it ended made it seem like they were on the tenant's side. They're being like, don't, don't let them do this to you. You have the right to be there. Um, but they were more, I guess, giving advice to the landlord being like, hey, landlords, if your tenant isn't paying you, you can't just turn off the electricity and the water. You have to go through a legal process, otherwise they'll sue you. Um, but like, again, this is much more helpful for the tenants, I think, than the landlords, because now you know that if they do that, you can sue. And I'm sure a lot of people did know that anyway, but I don't know shit, so. <laughs> anyway, their like green hair character, it's so funny because they seem to think that the only people who don't pay rent are like, the blue haired liberals, you know, like we're just the worst people to live in your flats. Like you don't want any of us to be your like tenants because we don't believe in capitalism and we don't have real jobs and we don't shower and we'll do like anytime you do one thing wrong, we're gonna sue you. And that is actually the complete opposite. I would believe like, a conservative person would actually be like way worse a lot of the time. Like I said, I don't say a fucking word. I only say something if I really need to because like as much as I dislike landlords, I don't want to have to deal with them. I don't want to be an inconvenience. I don't want people in my house. I will only say something if I really, really need to. Like when we lost all electricity on the top floor of our house, uh, which is where the office and both bedrooms are. We lost all electricity up there. Then I waited two days of trying to get it to work before I contacted the landlord. And then it took three weeks to be fixed and I didn't want to rush it and be annoying. So I'm clearly a great tenant to have because I <laughs> fuck myself over first. They keep using like housing as a human right as like a punchline, which is like, that says enough about their character. Honestly, they're like, housing's not a human right, you fucking idiot. Housing's not a human right. Housing is a way for me to make money, dumbass. I can't imagine having that mindset, like viewing just like an actual human right as just a way to make money off of people. That's insane. Like that's actually, terrifying that people think like that. Anyway, I saved a bunch of TikToks of this like green head character because I was fascinated and they were pissing me off. So we've got another one here. I just got sued for housing discrimination twice in the same week and it could happen to you. Oh, I've got to hear this. So I posted an ad to rent out my duplex, but I was worried about getting a nightmare tenant. Well, yeah, I mean, I've heard horror stories, but how are you discriminating? Well, in part of the ad, I wrote, I do not accept section eight. And that's discrimination? You don't have the right to refuse? Apparently not. So I changed the wording and I relisted the apartment and I got sued again. Oh my God, what now? Well, this time I wrote section eight is welcome, but now I'm a horrible discrimination monster. Seriously? Well, now what? Well, I'm not gonna invest another dollar without following two guys take on real estate. Anyone wanna place a bet on what section eight is? Because I didn't know. Uh, but Section 8. The Housing Choice Voucher Program, also known as Section 8, is the federal government's program for assisting low-income families, the disabled, and the elderly affording houses. Pa participants can choose housing that meets the requirements of the program and receive housing vouchers to help with their rental costs. And he's like, why can't I deny that? How is that discriminating? I just like don't want to let them live there because then I might make less money. Do you not know what discrimination is? Bro, you wanted to deny housing to people with like disabilities and who needed care and extra help. You wanted to deny them housing. And you're like, why is that discriminating? What? <laughs> what? This dude's the worst. This guy's the worst. He's like actually the fucking worst. And he always ends with the like, 
I'm not investing another dollar until I follow two guys take on real estate on TikTok. But they don't actually ever give you any more information. Like this, this is the whole TikTok. There's no further information about this entire thing anywhere else. They've never mentioned it ever again. So like, I don't, <laughs> how does following help at all in this issue? Um, the correct solution here is to just like, let people live in houses. <laughs> Like, don't be a landlord, that's number one. And two, just like, let people live there. Bro, finding, oh, mm, I talked about this already when I was finding this flat, but it the, the requirements for like finding a place to live are so ridiculous, so, so ridiculous. I needed to have like the entire year's worth of rent in savings in my account to be able to live here. And obviously I couldn't fucking do that. I don't have an entire year's worth of rent in my bank account or I would buy a house. And so I had to get a guarantor. The wild thing to me that makes no fucking sense at all is that that then means the guarantor has to have an income of three times the rent price. It's like, it can't be a combined cost, which makes absolutely no sense to me. I don't understand why it couldn't have been a combination of my income and like my uncle's income. It couldn't even be a combination of like my uncle and my auntie who were like married. It couldn't be a combination of that. It had to be either like one of their entire savings or like my entire savings, but it couldn't be like a joint thing. And that makes no sense. That's so irrelevant. That's so ridiculous. And so the flat just sort of sat empty for ages while we were trying to figure this out. And then people are losing money because they don't want to accept whole thing is ridiculous. It's so stupid. <laughs> the whole thing is so stupid. The requirements for like finding a place to live are fucking ridiculous. Just accept fucking government like funding for a house. If someone needs support from the government and they need like housing vouchers, let them fucking live there. What do you mean? I don't understand why it's discrimination. I don't understand why it's illegal to turn away these people who can afford the house because they're showing that they can. It makes my life difficult. You know how difficult their lives are? when they can't live in a house, much more difficult than yours, where you're buying, like literally they have 260 properties. They own 260 properties. And they're complaining about how it's annoying to like have someone live in one of their homes who otherwise couldn't afford to live in a house. Like, fuck you. Like from the, from like every fiber of my being, you are the absolute like scum of the earth. You are like actually a disgusting person. You're terrible people. If you are like this, then like, fuck you. I wanna lower our tenant's rent. What do you think? Are you crazy? We're landlords. We don't do that. Well, this tenant doesn't need a four bedroom apartment anymore. So she's gonna move out to downsize and save money. Well, that makes sense. Tenants move out all the time. Right. But if we reduce the price to a three bedroom rate, she'd probably stay. She's paid us $90,000 in rent so far. I guess. But why would we do that when we can rent to someone else? Well, she's a decent tenant. She's lived here five years, pays on time, never really causes any issues or damages. Who knows what kind of person we'd replace her with. Ah, I see where you're going. And then we'd also have turnover costs and a couple months of vacancy, where then we're getting nothing coming in. Exactly. I've learned I'd rather lower rents for good customers by following two guys' take on real estate. See, a couple of these videos I do like. Like this one, I appreciate this video purely because now I want to start a revolution where everyone, literally everyone, I'm going to need everyone to ask for a lower rent. Say that you want to leave unless they lower the rent. I feel like if we all do that, Surely we, surely, surely we can force the crash to come sooner. Surely we can fucking do something. <laughs> I guess they could say no, and that's kind of terrifying because you know, you want somewhere to live. But if they say no, then you just agree to the price again, you know, or you do leave if that's an option for you. But like, if we all just like ask for 200 pounds less, apparently they can all afford it, which we obviously all knew they can obviously fucking afford that. Most of these people bought these houses before they cost as much as they do. And they're charging the current rent prices. So they're making like a ton of money off of them because their mortgage is going to be like half the amount of rent we're paying based on the housing market. Um, so they can definitely afford to lower the rent. And this is confirmation. We should all ask for lower rent prices. I managed to do it that one time. I didn't ask to lower my rent. They asked to increase and I was like, fuck you, we don't have heating, I'm not paying more. And then I got the same rent. 
People are gonna try it, right? Maybe they'll be reasonable. Good landlords are reasonable people, obviously. That's what we've learned today. They're all very reasonable people. <laughs> oh God, the next, I've saved five more. I don't know if I'm gonna watch all of them. I don't know how much time we have, but all five of them, the thumbnail is him in the green wig. So let's see. Hey, slumlord, my light bulb's out. Come fix it! You haven't paid rent since the last time I replaced your light bulb for you. And that was five months ago. You need to leave. Hey! You're threatening to evict me within six months of a maintenance request? That's retaliatory eviction? I'm suing! What? Tenant-friendly state laws are insane. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Slumlords get what they deserve. If they're too stupid to not follow two guys take on real estate, here and on YouTube. I just love the line, Tenant friendly state laws are stupid. <laughs> That's so funny. I love these, like, it's so fucking gross and annoying that the government cares about the people who need houses above me, the person who's making money off of them trying to live in houses. That's disgusting. Why do they get priority over me? Bro, how are you so. Like, I don't understand how capitalism has your brain that bad. I don't understand how greed can get you that good. The state should care more about the people who, I don't know, would end up on the street otherwise. Like obviously, like from a capitalistic point even, right? Of like, if they aren't living in a house, they are the state's problem, like more so, you know? Like if they're on the street, then they have to go into like state housing and be in more uh, like under welfare and stuff than if they are in your house. So obviously the laws are going to prioritize them, even like not even from a humanitarian standpoint. And then from like an ethical standpoint, they absolutely should be prioritized because you know, it is a human right to just be able to live and have a house. I don't give a, f I don't care what you think because you are a monster. My apartment, he has to be turned to E to work. You're a slumlord. Oh boy, here we go again. Let's see what's wrong. What's wrong is housing, heat, and hair dye are human rights. Wow, no. What's wrong is that your furniture is blocking the heaters. Hey! Typical landlord blaming the tenant for owning furniture? I think you mean patient landlord who's teaching a tenant how to run a household. I learned the value of that by following two guys take on real estate here and on YouTube. This is the fucking funniest one so far because holy shit, bro. <laughs> I love that. Housing, heating, and hair dye are human rights. Too true. So right. So accurate. Housing, <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, they are. Uh, hair dye should actually be given to us for free by uh, the government, I think. That's my next petition is housing, heating, and hair dye are human rights. I want to make that my Twitter bio, actually. I love, I love though, housing, heating, and head eye human rights. He's like, ah, uh, no, what the heck? No, it's not. That's weird of you to say. Housing and heating, those aren't fucking human rights. Your problem is that your couch is in front of your heater, so it's making your room not warm anymore, which I say that my couch is also in front of my heater because I don't have enough room for it to be anywhere else. And then being like, oh, landlord blaming me for things, for having furniture. I can't believe people like genuinely try to deny like, housing and heating as a human right. Like living is a human right, right? Being alive, that's a human right. And in order to like do that, you kind of need to be warm and you kind of need to have shelter, you know? Uh, so yeah, human right. Hi, I'm looking for an apartment. Everywhere I look, rent prices are sky high. While inflation raised prices on everything lately, we used shrinkflation to keep our apartments affordable. Wait, I'll take one. Here you go, welcome home. It's just a closet. Hey! Yeah, that's shrinkflation, where we keep the price points the same, but offer less and less value. You know, you'd know about this if you just follow two guys take on real estate here and on YouTube. Thinking that this is a funny joke and not something that's an actual serious 
problem is. <sighs> I like just like, yeah, inflation is on everything. Yeah, everything is more expensive. Everything fucking sucks. But the housing market being pushed up so much is a massive contributor to that. Uh, like, no one can afford anything <laughs> anymore. Like, it's fucking so, it's so terrifying and so awful and so, like, so stressful for every fucking everyone, man. It's just so bleak. And, like, joking about, like, people now having to pay what they used to pay for, like, a house for, like, a closet-sized thing. It's not a very funny thing. Like, you have 267 places you can choose to live in right now. And, like, most people don't have one. And most people will never have one. Because that's, like, where we've gotten to. And you complain about how, like, you have to pay, like, property tax and people don't tip you and you actually deserve more money as a landlord. But, like, people deserve to be able to buy houses. If everyone could buy houses, everyone could afford way more other stuff, too. I think that people haven't thought about the consequence of, like, if everyone is spending all of their income on rent, they can't buy other shit, right? If everyone's spending all of their money on like food, electricity, and rent, and they can't spend their money on anything else, everything fucking dies. Everything crashes because then no one is producing any income. All of the fucking big CEOs and like company directors, etc., who are the ones who aren't being taxed and who are like anti-taxing the rich and also won't pay their employees anything that is reasonable, are all gonna start losing money because all of their employees suddenly can't afford to actually buy the things that they're producing. They can't afford to buy shit. And then what? Who's buying your products? No one's buying anything. And then things get getting more expensive, right? Because no one's buying it anymore. So you need to increase the price in order to make more turnover. But again, that is the opposite of what you should be doing. You should be lowering prices and then more people can buy them. If everyone lowered the prices and increased wages, more money would be being turned over because more people could actually do things, you know? If everything was cheaper and everyone had more spendable money, there would be way more turnover. Way more things could be purchased, way more money would be being passed back and forth and the economy would be moving so much better. But people won't do that because people are greedy <laughs> and don't understand how things work and don't want to give things away and don't want people to have the same amount of stuff as them. They like sitting up there and being like, hee hee hee, I have more than all of you. I have more freedom and liberties, hee 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 hee. But it's dystopian and it's disheartening and it fucking sucks and it's so shit and like people don't have any desire to do shit anymore. No one wants to work because why would I work if all I can do is like spend all day in a fucking closet and not do anything or go anywhere, you know? People are gonna stop working, people are gonna stop caring, people are gonna stop buying stuff and doing stuff and then it's all gonna come crashing down. Rich people don't pay their fair share of taxes, you're criminals! Lol, how that's pretty much exactly what I just said. <laughs> This green head person. We got we got some stuff in common. Really? How much do you pay in property taxes? Property taxes? I live with my parents. I paid a hundred thousand on my real estate just last quarter. How much have you paid in payroll taxes? Payroll taxes? I work at a coffee shop for tips. I pay payroll taxes on thirty employees. Hey, where's your tip money going? Well, home with me, of course. Sounds like you're the criminal who's not paying their fair share, and you'd have known better if you'd followed two guys' take on real estate here and on YouTube. I paid 100,000 just last quarter. Okay, so that means you had 100,000 to pay, right? You realize that, right? Like you can't pay 100,000 in taxes if you don't have 100,000 to spare to pay in taxes. So obviously I'm not paying 100K in taxes because I don't fucking have 100K. I'm not wealthy enough for like a large amount of tax to, you know, not make an impact on my life. Paying tax like, does very greatly impact me. Uh, whereas people like you who have 100K just lying around, yeah, that th fucking hand it over. You don't need it. Because what are you gonna do with it? Buy another fucking house so no one else can? You can put that 100K into someone's rent for the next like 10 years or some shit. I don't know. Tax the rich, lower prices, pay people more. Let's all work together 
and build a better society because this one fucking sucks. <laughs> the cost of living is terrifying. Food is expensive. There's like no food on the fucking shelves anymore. We've had empty freezers at Sainsbury's for weeks. Anyway, on that really fun note, uh, fuck landlords. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, these two are two of my least favorite people in the entire world. I hate them. I despise them. They are gross people. And if you own 270 houses, fuck you, really, is all I can say. Uh, I hope that, you know, you're all able to find somewhere to live. And I hope that you are able to support yourself and that you're able to enjoy whatever downtime that you have. And I hope that, you know, things start to get a little bit brighter because they're pretty bleak. <laughs> Massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons whose names are up on the screen right now. And a huge thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. I love and appreciate you all so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If you would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash savvy cat or click the top link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos stay early as well as podcasts a week early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things such as outtakes, a bonus mini podcast, live streams, etc. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, that Queer Kiwi. Remember, housing, heating, and hair dye are all human rights. <laughs> I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. <laughs>